nacho cheese is forever. Doritos, Quick question. What are the tastiest little pieces of gold you can ever eat? Answer. Doritos. So here's the thing. Doritos literally translates as little pieces of gold. So you're definitely not crunching gold bars when you can just take them to the bank. But how did this classic chip come to be? Watch this video to learn the incredible story behind Doritos. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. This modest invention that has now generated a whopping billion dollars in sales started in a remote corner of the legendary Disney World. Frontierland, a park in the middle of Disneyland, has many exciting attractions including a natural park that hosts millions of visitors. But nothing beats the Casa de Fritos, a Mexican restaurant right next to the runaway mine train roller coaster, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The restaurant was a subsidiary of a much larger company known as the Fritos Company, which we will look at later in this video, so stay tuned. Did you know that the little restaurant where the Doritos story began was one of the early sponsors who helped to fund the development of Disneyland? Here's the deal. Charles Elmer Doolin, founder of the restaurant, sought and got permission from Walt Disney to build a Mexican-themed Fritos restaurant in Disneyland. Disneyland officially opened in July 1955, and Fritos launched on August 11th of that same year. One thing you probably never knew is that Doritos, as we know them today, evolved from the popular Fritos concept. Fritos are like your average tortilla chips, made with corn and processed into masa, or dough made from ground corn. The major difference is in the preparatory process. Fritos were primarily fried corn chips widely distributed by the Fritos Corporation. The company started in the Doolin family garage and expanded to Los Angeles, Denver, and southeastern America. With this expansion, they began producing a wide range of products such as tortilla chips, bean dip, potato chips, fried pork skins, and other Mexican treats. These include the non-Fritos diet on Casa de Fritos' menu. Alex Foods supplied a bunch of these supplies to them, which would later play a crucial role in making Doritos. A major observation by one of Alex Foods' salesmen was key in producing the first Doritos. What happened? Keep watching to find out. So, early in the 60s, this salesman observed the Mexican restaurant was piling excess tortilla chips for disposal daily and came up with a fantastic solution. How is that? This employee recommended to the Casa de Fritos board that they should be cut into triangular shapes and then deep fried. How did that turn out? People loved it. The renewed tortilla chips would then be transformed from the regular dough, or masa, using the unique flavors of Mexican corn snack, Totopos. Rather than freely handing out a bag of Fritos to customers as is customary, Casa de Fritos first gave out the new product for free. The management noted the wild acceptance and rave reviews for the excellent chips taste as they became a hit. Thomas Edison once said, The value of an idea lies in the use of it. The Doritos vision was already born, but it wasn't anywhere near big yet. It wasn't even named Doritos yet. So what happened? Who transformed this idea? That much is owed to the genius of a man named Archibald Clark West, credited with developing the Doritos brand. The man was neither a chef nor a culinary expert. But he had one thing that he was great at, he was excellent at marketing. How did he achieve this feat? Keep watching to find out. Earlier in his career, he worked as a mobile sales representative before switching careers to advertising in New York City. His first incursion into the consumables market was when he participated in the Jell-O ad campaign. In short, West had a pretty impressive portfolio before he joined the Fritos company. West was the vice president of marketing for Fritos Company. On a visit to San Diego with his family, he stumbled upon a mini roadside Mexican restaurant serving deep fried corn chips. West was revved at the delightsome taste of the snack and loved it. It became an idea that he intended to pitch to the board of Fritos. However, his company was undergoing a merger with the H.W. Lay Company, and it was subsequently named Frito Lay, which is its name to this day. The Doritos vision was already born, but it was shunned by the implementation to bring out what the West had in mind. This would turn out to be a difficult time for Archibald West. What did he do? Keep watching to find out. In one of their corporate meetings at which the key members of the board of Frito-Lay, which now excluded Charles Doolin, who had passed away over a year before, West tried to sell the idea of a new kind of Fritos, but this time made from tortilla chips. This idea needed to be better received by his colleagues, who thought they'd be creating competition for their major product, Fritos. 
they generally did not think that making Fritos out of tortilla chips was inherently a great idea. So, they declined West's proposal. At this time, Fritos had hit the roof regarding production and patronage in the small region where the company was domiciled. Much of their products were pretty unrelatable to other parts of America. It appeared to them that there was yet to be a market that could accommodate the new product while still retaining Frito-Lay, a major Fritos marketing company. West took his work underground and did all the necessary research to win the board's approval. He set up a small space dedicated to the production of his groundbreaking idea, which the board had condemned, and he began working on making the Doritos. He coined the name Doritos from the word oro, meaning gold, and Eidos, which meant little. This was a major deviation from the meaning of Fritos, which can be roughly translated as little fried things. Doritos had to represent something different and unique with some inherent value. The fried corn chips had a golden tint, so it made sense to give the new snack a name that would stick and stand out. The most baffling thing was that West never considered making a rival for the Fritos company, despite their refusal to pursue his suggested product. The small plant where he produced it was merely a temporary front where he wanted to carry out a market experiment with the product and then attempt to pitch it once more to the board of Fritos. He understood what platform Fritos was, and it made sense to create a product that would reach a broader aspect of the consumer's market, which Fritos could not capture in the USA. And so he decided to pursue it. His subproduction outlet developed the triangle-shaped and crispy Dorito chips and added a unique cheese and chili flavor. In retrospect, Fritos was not a universal product for most Americans, and this spurred West to come up with a unique ingredient that would go on to define the future of Doritos. He said to his workers, How about we have a taste like tacos? So, consumers will be eating tortilla chips that taste much like their beloved tacos. The Mexican taco was a special menu item across a broad part of the nation, and it still is. The crazy thing is that it presented a great wave, which Doritos could ride and spread to other parts of the country as a product of Fritos. He wanted to create a product that smelled and tasted like something everyone loved. This would make customers perceive the product to be familiar. When he was done perfecting the Doritos, he opted to hold his horses and only informed the Fritos company after he added Doritos to the menu. So here's the kicker, until then, every investment he had made into producing Doritos outside the company's vested interest was basically from his own coffers. He rented the space and bought the equipment and materials used to make Doritos. Not many people will do that, even out of loyalty to a company that originally rejected his idea. I wouldn't do it. He made a deal to procure tortilla chips in large quantities from Alex Foods, the company that had given Casa de Fritos the idea to remake the tortilla chips. This is what connected the practice. He had no idea that a branch of the Fritos company had added a revolutionary product to the menu until he met the small Mexican roadside stand serving the remade tortilla chips. He created an avenue for the products to be produced on a larger scale and gave them the branding that made them a global phenomenon. The first marketing rounds for Doritos were test marketed in Southern California. The sales were so rapid that their tortilla chips supplier could barely keep up with the increasing demand. Josh James said, When you find an idea that you just can't stop thinking about, that's probably a good one to pursue. West had finally hit the eureka moment for his idea, and he knew that he had the product and the evidence of success needed to convince his colleagues at Fritos. Hence, he prepared for a second pitch that would ultimately change things. He kept a record of the entire process and brought a couple of bags of Doritos for the board to sample. They were eventually persuaded of the gold mine's worth and agreed to market Doritos under the wider company. They made it an integral part of their in-house productions, and the chips started being produced en masse at their facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The nationwide distribution began in earnest. The other two main products of the company, Fritos and Cheetos, were unaffected and they enjoyed a wider amount of sales. The key selling point of the Doritos was that they embodied the tasty goodness of tacos rather than the basic corn chips that consumers were used to. Other flavors and colors were to follow, and millions of Americans learned to love different flavors of Doritos as their favorite snacks. A lot of credit must thus be given to Archibald West for taking the initiative to produce a product that turned out to be a highly profitable commodity for Frito-Lay. In 1993, the company had gross sales of Doritos worth about $1.2 billion, about one-third of the total sales recorded by Frito-Lay that year, with the nacho cheese flavor being their best-selling product just yet. It became a really big investment for the company. 
They were willing to spend $50 million to redesign the Doritos and make it more competitive even with restaurant tortilla chips that were bigger and had stronger seasoning. This is now a standard that they are upholding even after 57 years of marketing Doritos, talking about a timeless product. Did you know that long after Arch West retired, Frito-Lay made a habit of sending him newer flavors of Doritos to taste? It makes sense as a way of remembering the big part he played in bringing the company a product that, on its own, brings the company a profit of at least $600 million annually. West eventually passed at the age of 97. He is still remembered in all circles as a true revolutionary, even in a small aspect of the food industry. What is the bottom line? Some of the lessons we can pick from the origin of Doritos are Number 1. Fresh ideas can also be born out of what others have deemed to be wastes. Number 2. It is never about the idea, it is about making the ideas happen. Number 3. No idea is ever truly a waste. Number 4. Only dismiss a product once you have tested it against the market. Everyone loves Doritos because someone dared to try and make something new out of an existing product. Even the top celebrities in the American music industry adore Doritos. It is also the official treat of the Super Bowl, the biggest sporting event of the year in the United States. Doritos and other Frito-Lay products like Cheetos and Fritos have become an important part of modern-day American food culture. A bite of Doritos here and there makes a big difference.